Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hi. That was weird. (laughs) Welcome to the General Hospital recap for July. I stopped writing the dates down. 19th? Yep. Through 23rd. There you go. There we go. So we forgot that Thursday was our 250th episode. I saw that you posted about that to tell everyone else. And I was like, oh, we didn't talk about that. But that's no, okay. 250th. That's insane. And we've done so good. We haven't skipped a single week. Mm-hmm. And like we were talking before we even got started today, I'm going on vacation in a couple weeks and we're still making plans to not skip. Yep. The real test will be next year when I'm traveling a lot. We will get it done. I'm pretty sure we will. Yes. I can just come with you. Okay. Well, you're coming <laughs> to one travel. <laughs> Unless you join real estate, you can't come to the other one. Oh, come on. We'll just pretend. And then be an honorary member. We can talk about that down the line. <laughs> It'll be an adventure. Yes. It'll be fun. So where are you starting? I didn't take any notes because oh, I binge watched all of them last night from like midnight till four. Jeez Louise. I woke up at four. <laughs> My God. You need to start getting more prepared earlier. Why? Yeah. <laughs> no, actually it was really nice because It's summer and the kids are home, but because they were on vacation with their dad, they were all super clingy this week. They needed to be around me constantly and talk to me about everything, which is great. I'm glad that they missed me, but it was to the point last night where I was like, I would stay up all night just to have this quiet time without anyone in my ear. And because they knew that it was general hospital time, Megan stays up late too, Mm -hmm. but she wasn't going to come down and bug me and get stuck watching general hospital. So I got to sit there on the couch all by myself and watch General Hospital. And it was great. That's nice, though. Yes. I I missed you. It's okay. I didn't start watching until Friday. So I'm not saying I don't always slack off because I do usually (laughs) save it until Saturday. But starting Mm. at, but you're a night owl anyway. I am. I could not do that. I, I don't know. I think I paid way more attention because it was just me. Yeah. And I knew there was going to be no interruptions. There you go. So That's I'm good. impatient to watch it every single day because I want to know what's going to happen next. So True. it's fun to binge the whole thing. I also have that problem watching stuff on like Netflix because then I <laughs> ruin the whole season by watching it all in three days. Speaking of which on Paramount Plus right now, I am watching Why Women Kill. And on the first season, there's a little girl named Emily mm-hmm. who's played by Grace Scar- Scarola. I can't ever say her last name either. She plays Avery. She's one of the twins that plays Avery. And I'm sitting there like, because she was shown in like a memory. Oh, okay. so, you know, how, like sometimes they do like that soft. And I know that they also, I believe they have an older sister. Yes. So I'm like, is that the older sister? Is that so I had to do? But it was Grace Scarlet. But they look like triplets. They are yes. so identical. Yes. Yeah. She. They were in... I think it was Chicago Fire a couple months okay. back. And I saw, and I was the same thing. Is that them? Is that their older sister? I don't know who that is, but I knew it was one of them. And she was Frank. so cute because she always is. But yeah, that's, I basically didn't watch TV at all until Friday. And then I've watched a lot of TV since Friday. <laughs> <laughs> it is good to have a relaxing weekend and just watch your TV. Yeah. So we can talk about all that uh, during yes, reality, reality check. check. So, so we wait. talked about. When Steve mentioned Austin's age, that Jason would have to be... Oh, yeah. We also forgot to mention Jason has been aged because in 1983, there was the custody battle and stuff like that going Mm -hmm. on. So what? Jason was born in 81, I think. I think so. So he's supposed to be our age. And Jason Morgan is not our age. No. Jason's in his 50s. 1980s, Jason was conceived... So yeah, but was- now it's 78, but I'm sorry. Steve Burton is not four years older than me. Mm-mm. Steve Burton's 10 years older than me. Right. No, he just turned 50. He is 12 years older than me. Right. He looks darn good for he it. He does. He looks great. You can't, but you can't say that, that he's only uh-huh. 42. No, no, sorry. So that was according to Wikipedia. Let's see what general hospital fandom has to say. Well, they're messing up ages. Not that we don't know they do that, but they're messing up ages all over the place because this week Cam said to Joss, I've always wanted you. And I was like, no, you didn't. You wanted Emma. You're wrong. Right? Yeah. Jason was born 1981. 
So he should only be 39. Yeah, no. But still, that's all mm-hmm. wrong. But yeah. Okay. It was cute that when Spencer came out, he said, Hey, Townie. That because was that cute. was a throwback. However, you're right. They fought over Emma. And when Joss was like, you know, because she said something about, you're the one that I always had a crush on or something. And I'm like, I don't care if they have to age them. I just don't like when they try to change the storyline like that. Because now well, if they bring Emma back, she's going to be like, excuse me, do you not remember fighting over However, me? unless they also age up Emma. No, no, right, right, no, but no. Unless they also do it is kind of creepy to have two adult men talking that way about how they used to fight over a girl who is still 13, where they were the age. They were the same age as her. So for them to remember... But they could age her up a little bit because in real life, she's 15. Yeah, but they were all the same age. I know. So they would have to age her up to 18, 19 no. for her to match that them remembering that storyline together. I was impressed that Trina didn't call him out. Why didn't she? I was kind of like mad about that. I think that Trina didn't call him out because she needs to know why he lied. And once she knows that, then she'll figure it out. Yeah. I'm not sure how she's going to handle being around Ava all the time, though. Right. When she's realizing something is up. Right. Ava calls her out. Yeah. Ava knows her. They're so cute that they went to the pool together. Yes. And she tried to parent trap them. Yes. She watches the original movies, oh, not the remakes. Absolutely. Hands down. She might have watched the Lindsay Lohan one, but she's totally an old school girl. Yes. That was the best movie. That was one of my favorite movies. But Trina and Joss actually being at the pool makes sense. Mm hmm. Because it's her mom's pool. Mm hmm. Right. Even if it was you had to pay to go there, she would let Joss go and her friend for free. Right. So that made sense. I like Britt and Spencer. Yes. And when she was like, do you want a drink? And he's like, gin and tonic. She's like, yep, iced tea. Okay. <laughs> I like that he was trying to hook Nicholas back up with her. Like, they're just going to fall right back into place. And they're right. both like, what are you doing, Spencer? No. Right. No. no. I'm glad that Nicholas finally paid attention, though, and heard him talk about the roach in the box and was like, how right. did you know that? Right. And it's on social media, so show it to me. Oh, they they took it down. Yeah. Come on. Nothing ever leaves the internet for real. Well, except for he couldn't go back it unless he screenshot it. I feel like if you typed in roach in glass jar, whatever restaurant they were at, it would pop up. Somewhere. Yeah. I mean, everything's on YouTube. Everything's on YouTube. If there's some weird something that happens anywhere, you could look it up. On YouTube? Yeah. Okay. People put weird videos on YouTube all the time. I didn't think they... Okay. I was thinking more like Facebook or TikTok is where it would have been. Mm -mm. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure it started out there in my mind. I love how we do this. In my (laughs) mind, it was put up on TikTok or something, but then it eventually makes its way to YouTube. So you can look it up a hundred years from now. Screenshots last forever though. Yeah, but you You can take down all those links. You can take down all the things. Screenshots. I mean, I'm a big fan of screenshots, but that's not what I think Spencer would do. I'm surprised that he wouldn't have. Well, it didn't really exist, so he didn't. I know, but I'm just saying his dad should have been like, all right, well, you're the kind of kid that would have screenshot it. Let's show it down to me. your cloud history. Exactly. Let's see what you, you got the immediate backup going of. on. There you go. Yep. So do you think they're going to come out with Edward's memoirs? Because they I, referenced the Port Charles travel guide. Yes. And then referenced his memoirs. Right. I don't know. I would be so And excited. why didn't we look in the travel guide for information on Jimmy Lee? Because Probably because it was written by Lucy and Lucy was nowhere in any of the stuff that we watched. And it's called Travel Guide. To me, that's the places and some background history on the main players. I wouldn't think you'd be exposing people's illegitimate children in a travel guide. Yeah, but the quarter mains are such a big part of the history of Port Charles, at least 10 years after the show started. And like you'd want... The history of the prominent families. It's like knowing the Carnegie family history and stuff like in about the Fricks and stuff like that in Pittsburgh. You don't know about any of the family <laughs> histories. Okay. <laughs> You're looking at yep, me like, sure. It's exactly like that. Except I, but it is. I didn't care to know any of that either. All you right. should. It's kind of, it's not it's some not of it's juicy. It's not that I don't care about the history. I just feel like if I'm Someone going to actually go... try to pose as Andrew Carnegie's daughter and actually cause like all this fraud and they wound up going to court and he was like you know if you had done some research you'd have realized this was not my daughter mm. like if someone had even called me yeah so he kind of had a little jimmy lee stuff going on too all right except for she was not his daughter yeah 
She just lied about a lot of stuff. Okay. She liked drama, apparently. She'd be a good soap fan. <laughs> She's dead now. <laughs> Don't think they had soap operas back then. No? Oh, that's a shame. Andrew Carnegie did not have a soap opera. <laughs> but still. Anyway, wouldn't have thought it would be in the travel guide. Like, yes, this is the first family home or something like that. Talking about illegitimate children. No, I don't expect that to be in my travel guide. So that's why we didn't look. But it's Lucy and she's gossip. So we should have looked at it through that lens too. Of of course, Lucy would spill. And we knew that they talked about, because I think when we used it, we used it for the nurse's ball, Mm -hmm. which makes sense because it's a big event in the town every year. And there was stuff in there about like Robin and all those different things. But like she documented like the toxoplasmosis, the tainted water supply, you know, stuff like that, like events in in the town, in right. the town. But right. Not one person coming to town. Exactly. She didn't do. But I'm hoping. When did Lucy, Lucy come? Because that was possibly even before her time. No. Didn't she come like. 86. I was so, so going to yeah. guess that. So yeah, it was. It was ha. before. That was honestly going to be my guess. So, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> we kind of got all over the place. We did. That's okay. What the heck was up with Jordan going back now after talking to Aunt Stella to say something to Curtis? You had plenty of time. Mm-hmm. You agreed to the divorce. You agreed to how it was going to go down. I'm kind of on board with her right now, though. She's standing her ground. Why would I want to fight for a marriage that he so badly wants out of? Right. And she admits Finally. Yeah. Admits like this. It just wasn't working. Exactly. So why is she going back to say anything? I don't know. Let it go. Yep. Divorce is hard. It's hard to let go. But once you've made that decision, you have to remember you made that decision for a reason. And if he's already moving on with somebody else, not saying that he shouldn't, but it's done. Yeah. Don't put yourself through extra heartache just because Aunt Stella doesn't approve. Give me a break. She did hold her ground though with her. Like (laughs) you've been gone. Don't. Exactly. Come in and. You don't know anything. Ooh. And Jordan standing up for Sean. Yeah. I liked it. Mm -hmm. I liked Jordan this week. I liked Jordan. Jordan was finally being written as the strong Jordan. We like and know or remember because that's not how she's been written lately. Mm -mm. I think that's why I really didn't like her trying to go back to him now though was the strong part was making the decision. She's moving on. This is what's going on. And Aunt Stella made her doubt herself. And I don't like that. Yeah. She pulled out the, what, you can't sign a piece of paper line, too. Yeah. I liked that. But Stella tearing apart Sean. I love Sean. He is just like, all right, you've you've had... And he was kind about it. Exactly. He's like, I'm going to let you say every horrible thing that you need to. Right. You know, it wasn't, and I don't care. It was, no, I'm going to let you do this because I know that you need to. Mm Mm-hmm. I just don't know what Stella gets out of it, though. She got it. She knows that she said it. I guess so. But she, she got off her chest. She complains about a lot of stuff that there is nothing that's going to change. Obviously, she's upset that her nephew died. Yeah. Okay. For a second, I wanted to say son. I'm like, no, that's not right. Her nephew died and that he was responsible for it. But it's been all those years. It's not like it just happened last week. But she never had a chance to talk to him. But what's he going to say? Right. But she never had the chance mm-hmm. to confront him. I don't feel like I would do that. It would just make me more frustrated that they couldn't say the right thing because there is no right thing to say. If someone killed one, but she thought of Thomas as one of her kids. And if someone killed one of your girls and you still didn't get a chance to talk to them or confront them for 15, 20 years, don't you think you would still have something to say? This would be why I need your help burying a body because that would be the direction I would go in. It wouldn't just be a conversation, but well, she was having it in front of the police commissioner. So... Yeah, I don't know that I would care about that. Can't really kill people. Shouldn't really kill kill people in. I mean, of- if it's Jordan, how she has been being written, she still wouldn't have enough evidence. <laughs> so we'd be okay. She's like, I think I saw her shoot him. I don't know. The bullet could have come from over there that we still don't know and where. I was it came standing from. right there, but there was a glare in my eyes, <laughs> and you know, I just kind of started to daydream. I was thinking of the conversation that I was having about Curtis and I just kind of missed it all. Okay. (laughs) Talking about divorce, Nicholas and Ava. I don't understand why she's freaking out that it's going to take six weeks. Yeah. It's six weeks. You've moved out. You still have a lot to happen in six weeks, but it's also enough time to save it. 
even the crazy stalker, though, has to realize that divorce doesn't go through instantly. Right. So he shouldn't be trying to kill you because you're still married for the six-week processing right. period. And I'm sorry. Hold it. Spencer keeps pointing out that ever since they decided to get divorced, mm-hmm. the stuff has stopped. And then it's only a matter of time before someone says, oh, yeah. And that all seemed to happen around the same time that you came to town. Exactly. He's a smart kid, but he doesn't have all this stuff together. Right. He should know to continue pulling some of the stalking until right. it's over. Or at least prove some point. note. Right. Like, I am disappointed in him. <laughs> okay, first of all, I mean, I'm not, like, proud of him for any of this. But the fact that he did, in fact, do that to Avery. Yes. That was very disappointing. And that was his opportunity now to make it look like he's not part of it is he should get something. Right. Because he's in that. Right. He's yes. Sending himself something spooky. Yes. The fact that he's not doesn't make any sense. Right. I did like that Nicholas apologized to Britt, though, and she let him, you know, yes. she was like, it's okay, I get it. Like, you had to, at least she was his last resort. Right. You know, before his own son. But <laughs> yes, he's not going to have gone there. I don't think that she'll help him Mm-mm. if she figures it out. She'll be like, no, not cool. Right. No. But I do like that they remembered to bring back that relationship. Absolutely. Because they were really good friends. Yes. I'm trying to think, like, everything moved the storyline along this week, but nothing that was super eventful. Maxie said bye to Bailey. Yeah. Which was sad, but expected, because that's what you do before you go to Texas. Yep. I don't like that they're keeping it so open-ended, though. Like, Brooklyn's like, she'll always be taken care of. Everything will be okay. Right. Are you keeping this kid for the next 10 years? What's going on? Well, she doesn't know how long she's going to need. I wish that they would just allow Maxie to be a mom. Mm-hmm. Because she wants to. Right. I guess, in a way, she kind of has for James. We just didn't get to see him on screen enough. No. It was always talked about in the background. She dropped him off here, picked him up there. Right. He sleeps a lot. <laughs> he does crib. sleep a lot. He's sleeping a lot. And Mac and Felicia a lot. <laughs> which is fine because, you know, grandparents. Yes. She was a single working widow mom. Oh, Brando finally deciding that he's <gasps> going to be with Sasha. He chose her. That was the highlight yes. of the week. Even that was though sweet. Gladys was so angry and annoyed by it. Well, how about him just straight up asking Curtis? And Curtis is like, okay, so you were talking about your lady now? Like, and that was the first time that they met. <laughs> yeah. Brain just like, can I talk to you? <laughs> right. Can you tell me what I'm supposed to do? If you're asking, you know what you're supposed to do. Right. So just follow your heart and go be But with I think Sasha. that he also knows Curtis's story-ish. Yeah. That he probably knows, oh, hey, you've had to make similar decisions. Mm-hmm. So good for you. It was so sweet, though. It was. What's Gladys going to do, though? I don't know. I don't understand how she can make him work for someone that he doesn't want to work for. And if she tries to cause trouble, she's just going to end up getting him hurt. Right. And it's not like Carly's her favorite person or she's Carly's favorite person either. Right. So, I don't know. I want to see how much you remember, being that you didn't write anything down. I'm trying to think. Oh, Nina and Willow. They were got along very nicely. They were. Yes. I wasn't quite sure... Why she got that flustered when she was talking to Mike. If she had her phone turned down at the correct volume, you couldn't hear who was on the other end. Right. And it totally made sense. You could tell someone walked into the room. Hey, I have to go. My grandson's awake. I'll be there as soon as I can. Bye. Right. Right. It would have been funny because I mess up my phone all the time and put people on mute on accident. It would have been funny if she put them on speakerphone on accident and then they heard. (laughs) So we did have somebody message us. So on Instagram at so very me underscore. Oh, that's cute. Cute name. Hi, upstate New Yorkers call NYC New York. I lived in Buffalo for three months and the residents there referred to NYC as New York and residents of the four other boroughs of NYC called Manhattan the city. Hope that helps. Oh, thanks. It does. Thank you. Oh, that's very exciting. Yep. So we got our answer. Yes. Yep. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I love when people give us our answers to the most random things that we need (laughs) answers to. Because we do ask random questions. We do, but it's much needed. I think that's all that we got this week. Yeah. Well, yeah, thanks. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that he did call her to help pay for Lenny's. Oh, I got called out. Not called out, but um, one of our fans messaged us on Twitter and was like, I am sitting there yelling, geode, geode, geode. When we were talking about the rock last week. Oh, and, I oh. it. and then it was followed by, and how did she miss hearing Lenny have cancer? I still don't know. I think I might've left the room for a minute and forgot to press pause and just didn't come back. I don't know. That's the, I enjoyed 
knowing something that you didn't know. Because, that was so obvious. Yes, because you take note of random things sometimes that I totally don't notice. And that was major. And you're like, huh? So oh, well. I liked it. Still plot point or plot missed opportunity to have David. We are determined to have David Hayward. Oh my gosh, yes. But yeah, I'm glad that Sunny called, Mike called Nina to help pay and that Lenny is going to let her. Yes. So I'm just tired of the storyline. I hope that they reveal who Sunny is soon. Yeah. I really don't got much. I mean, I feel like it's not going to happen. We've talked about this before. They're going to end up hooking up so she can get pregnant and then we have another kid that we don't know what to do with. No, 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 no. All right. What else you got? Um, Nicholas talking to Molly and TJ, sending over the champagne. Congratulations on your Do you think that was true? Do you think that he was trying to get some insight onto Oh, I'm sure he Sean. was trying to get some info. At but first, that was... I really thought that he was genuine oh, with it. Nicholas, except for when it comes to Ava, I don't think Nicholas is genuine about anything. So, By Alexis, too, who true. is Molly's mom. So, True. I still think maybe it was half and half. Like, he really did wish them well, but sure, give me the inside scoop while I'm sitting here. Right. That would be understandable. Okay. So yeah, he's he's getting concerned that Sean's going to try to figure out who killed Hayden or didn't kill Hayden, was attempting to kill Hayden. Well, and Liz is on team. Seriously, we need to find out what happened because there's no way that Hayden would have just been gone this oh, wrong. Oh, right. You know, pretty much everybody is... She should probably remember that whenever she's trying to hook up with her sister's baby daddy, but okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. It just makes me so mad. Hope you don't mind. I bought some cupcakes. I do mind. You're not her mom. It's not your snack day. Go. She was also being a good aunt, though. No. She did it for Violet. No. Not, well, she did it to save Finn's face, but no, she did it for Violet. A good aunt would call ahead of time and say, hey, FYI, you probably shouldn't do veggie snacks or veggie snacks and cupcakes. I'd be happy to drop some off. You don't just show up. That is true. Okay. Yeah, because that is embarrassing to him. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with orange slices and carrot sticks, Mm-mm. especially after a sport. You Correct. Don't need more sugar, right? Or during. Okay, I played youth softball. I was not allowed to leave the field that much. Mm-mm. Did she leave the base? I think so. I was I under think, the impression that yeah, she, when she they, got not, the hit, she got to first, and then she ran over to Finn, and it's like, did you see that? No, I thought again in my head she ran the bases and got the goal point, whatever hit run. run. There we go. I don't do sports. <laughs> anyway. That is basic. <laughs> I don't do very much sports either, but I at least know. Th- but I, I am a baseball fan. So, but okay. Goal. Well, whatever. Goal, point, score. Baseball analogies are used for everything. Go. It's a home run. So you get the run. Okay. So she got the run and then they switched like, sides. Oh See, I know this. Then they switched sides. So she would be in the outfield. But I was. Under the impression that she just abandoned her outfield post. Okay. Boom. Look at that. Sounded like I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Edit the rest of that out. So it's just uh, abandoned her outfield post. Although Finn giving her, and when all is right with the universe, you swing. I'm like, in that case, we would never have baseball mm-hmm. because no. the universe is never right. No. It's just no. <laughs> when all is right in the universe, swing. <sighs> Yeah, I just, I couldn't get over how many times she kept coming back over. Yeah, no. We were allowed to go up to the concession stand because it was next to the restroom. But, like, you had to come right back. Yeah. And you had to be paying attention to batting order and all that. But Right, even with cheer, they're not allowed to leave the field without asking permission. And then an adult takes them to the bathroom and right back. But they're not allowed. We couldn't just leave snacks or anything during the game. Oh, see, we could have snacks on the bench in the dugout. So, like, those cupcakes could have been doing their rounds in the dugout. Oh, or no. afterwards. First of all, the team won. And hold it, let's not make Violet think it was because of her. Right. Can we not raise our kids to the team sports or one by one person? Mm-mm. Nope, nope, nope. It's not like she was the heavy hitter. And I'm sure that she wasn't the only person that. Exactly. And at that age, aren't they still? It was T-ball, right? She said she was doing T-ball. She said she was doing T-ball. But when he talked about hitting. Right. He said there was the a balls, pitcher. Yeah. Coming right. at you. But T-ball is There's no on pitcher. the team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, they messed that up. Maybe that's when all is right in the world <laughs> in the universe. I don't know. Because he even said, you're not looking at the picture. You're not yeah. looking here. Yeah. So, whoops, they messed that up. Look, Finn is less about sports than I do. That's good. <laughs> he is trying to be such a good dad, though. He is a very good dad. 
And Elizabeth is a good aunt for showing up to the game. Although she said that Jake was playing on the other field Aiden. or Aiden was playing on the other field. Yeah. And she's not watching him. That's a little weird. Maybe he's not up yet. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We're not going to start judging that one. We're going to judge the things that we saw. Okay. <laughs> Her rescuing with cupcakes, but whatever. Mm, I don't know anything else. What other notes do you have that I haven't covered? Well, Finn and Liz talking. <sighs> they don't stop talking about Peter. It's so annoying. I didn't think that. So when Terry overheard them and she's like, I'm sorry, I came at you guys like that. And I'm, I was, I rewound it and I was like, you when did you come at them? them? No. I'm like, Terry, Mm-mm. you were not. Right. Don't you just said, what are you talking about Peter for? Exactly. That's all that you did. You and didn't. Being that he disappeared. I love that she calls her biz. Yes. Okay. Anyway. Being that he disappeared in your hospital. If you hear someone saying something that sounds like information, you're going to say what's the latest. Right. She did not come at them. No. Mm-mm. At all. But I liked Jason overhearing because. About time. Yeah. He's like, hey, Liz, you're not hiding things very well when you're standing in the middle of the park talking about stuff. I did like Finn trying to say, no, we seriously need to not include anyone else. But Liz has so many valid points. Do you know how many murders he has been part of and Mm -hmm. never been convicted? I feel like that's your go-to person. Yeah. Getting a body bag and a gurney and trying to figure it out yourself. No. No. And trying to get Terry to be part of it. Mm. No. Right. Do not get more people involved that have no idea what they're doing. You're going to get caught. And completely innocent. Mm-hmm. Completely. Uh, Jason obviously is innocent of this crime. However, he did at one point try to kill Peter. Mm-hmm. Which, thank you, Sean. Just going back to that real quick. When Sean's like, yeah, I tried to kill Hayden once, but I didn't do it. So I wasn't entirely wrong for being imprisoned. Yes. Good job. However, responsibility. what he was in jail for, the actual, he... Did not do. Right. However, I was, I'm glad that he is not forgetting that. And Alexis getting transferred to a cushy and everyone's like, Oh, this is much better for you. Yeah. You still did the crime and think I was, I was going to lose it if she did not say that. And yeah. she's like, I did what I'm in here for, mm-hmm. you know, and then Ryan is somehow, I don't how understand. is he there? Is it because he's incapacitated? I guess so, but okay. I still don't understand. I don't understand Whatever. any of it. But yeah, back to Liz and Jason. Jason's totally going to help them out. Oh, yeah. He's got it. <gasps> He's going to go to Brett while she's still chief of staff and get help. Oh. Mm. oh so I'm looking okay at each that. other. Yes. <sighs> I need Sloan. him to change his mind and tell Carly no. But Monica talking to him and straight up asking, was this Carly's ploy? Right. Or, or is it? And she was very kind about reminding him. Here's all the reasons why Mm -hmm. I will never love Carly. Yes. Except for you and Michael. Right. So, but Jason not telling her, he did kind of almost tell her she was wrong. He's like, you have a valid point, but. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, no, no. The second that you say, but it erases (laughs) the fact that you just said she has a valid point or he can't tell her how to feel, but. And I'm like, "Mm -mm." no, they did have a good talk though. Mm -hmm. And she was like, was that Carly's scheme? And he's like, we decided together that this was, and he wasn't saying I love her. And you know, exactly. this is totally what we want. It was, we decided together. This is what be- is best for the family. Mm-hmm. And so I thought she was going to give him Alan's ring. Aww. I just, I kept thinking that. And I was like, is she going? And is that how we're going to start talking about Alan? That would but I sense. don't think we're there yet with right, the Maybe she'll give it to him filming. right before the wedding. Maybe. That would make sense. So maybe they do drag it out a little bit longer. Because oh, I thought that they were going to have it be super quick, though. Like, I thought they were basically going to, like, hurry up and get married. Because that's what they need to do. <laughs> right. You know? You it doesn't make have, sense why they're not married yet. You don't have to, to wait six weeks for a marriage license. So let's go get married. I don't understand. No. Nope. That's going to make me sad if he gives... If she gives him Alan's ring. Didn't she give it to somebody else, though? She gave it to him already for Sam when she, when he married Sam. No, I guess. Didn't she? Reuse. I feel like that she did, but. Did I wear a wedding ring? I think. Yep. She gave Alan's wedding ring to Sam, who in turn gave it to Jason on their wedding day. All right. Well, it was a good so, storyline we were writing to that it already happened. Well, she can always give it back to him again and be like, Hey, by the way, still want you to have dad's ring. Yeah, but you can't use the same ring. It's a fake marriage. I'm pretty sure he could. No, no. New rings for everyone. 
That's how it works. Do not read. That's bad karma right there. It's a fake marriage. I don't what care. kind of good karma are we having? No. No. That would be insulting to Sam. You cannot use the same ring. That, correct. That yes. Yes. Got married with in a real relationship to this one. No. Mm -mm. Well, maybe he has too because they got married twice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> maybe he can get the one from Lucy that she had whenever she married Alan. Cause that no, Monica and Alan got married twice. I know. Okay. But I just meant because that was, it wasn't a fake marriage, but it was a not good marriage. So then he can have that one for Carly. Sure. Okay. All right. I think we're both sleep deprived and a little bit out of this. What else do you have written down that I have missed? I feel like I got the high points. So apparently watching from midnight to four is a good idea. Anna figuring it out that it was fed. Oh yeah. That was important. And the one line that Valentine said, when you find out one of the men you're in love with, hooray for him acknowledging that she still does love Finn mm -hmm. and not expecting that whatever is happening with them means she no longer loves Finn. Right. So that is such a mature and one of the men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so not cute. the man, not like it was just one of the men. There you go. So I liked it. I like Valentine and Brooklyn though. I do. They are really good co-parents. I'm really sad. They are not having mm -hmm. a real kid. Or don't have a real kid. I agree. They're very together. Cute. And they just seem to get each other. Mm -hmm. It's a very real I thought she was going to tell him. I think she's getting tempted, but she can't. I think she's getting close, though. I think she's going to. But she needs to do it now or she needs to wait because she can't tell him right before the holidays. That would be sad. It's July. We're, like, getting into the holidays. Have you been to the store? The Halloween candy's already out. Okay, I'm sorry <laughs> if your Halloween is... Who, who worries about ruining somebody's Halloween? I'm just saying we're getting, once you hit Halloween. Poor Valentine's Labor Day is going to be destroyed <laughs> if he finds out that the baby is not his. Once you hit Halloween, then all the other holidays come. We are still three months away. Just that is saying, quarter of the year. Just saying. Three I, months. I don't want the holidays ruined. That would be sad her first Halloween. <laughs> And they're going to Bailey the first Labor Day is going to be from a broken home. <laughs> Gosh. Be quiet. Oh, what holiday is in August? Is there a holiday in August? I don't think so. I don't know. I think the next one's Labor Day. Okay. <laughs> Done talking to you as you make fun of me. Yeah, okay. <sighs> and Anna and Valentine were at Ryan's Bar, which is from Ryan's Hope. Yes. And Chloe was the pilot's sister. So first of all, Chloe liked that. Chloe's her name. Mm -hmm. Or Chloe's name is Marie. Right. And was the pilot's sister. I liked that. Messed up. Messed up, Peter. Totally messed up. It is totally messed up. But I liked the fact that they had it all connect because you do have to wonder, how do you just find these people? Right. Oh, apparently there's the family. Yeah. I mean, do they have like a business card? Like, do they have, this do is the family business? A pilot, a bad nurse, or <laughs> I don't know. As someone that makes antidotes. There you go. A chemist. Sure. Mm -hmm. Chemist? Sure. sure. Okay. So where's that person? Mm -hmm. Oh, back to Molly saying, Alexis is not a very physical person. She is in jail for trying to attack <laughs> Franco and stabbing Dante. I really wasn't sure what after I... stealing a needle. Yes. It wasn't it wasn't an instinctual you are physically in the presence and you hit back. It was a thought out and manipulated Yeah. <laughs> that sentence was just like it didn't make really, any really really Molly make any sense. She's in trouble for getting into an altercation with a guard, but she's not usually a physical person. It doesn't matter if she got in an altercation, no matter the degree of it, you, I mean, I understand what was going on is what caused it, but in normal life, don't go after prison guards. <laughs> there you go. Correct. Well, you shouldn't. But again, the reason she's in jail is because of a physical yes attack that went badly. Molly's just trying to defend her mom. That was just a really poor... Yeah. Choice of words. I agree. Oh, I don't think that Austin does realize the babies are switched. I don't either. From I like him. He's I like kinda, him too. I'm starting to, he's like, hey, cuz. Oh, cool. We're not there yet. All right. So anyway. <laughs> and Max, he's like, why didn't you tell me you guys were related? Because I didn't know. He just broke into a meeting and right. said he was. Right. Just that whole interaction. I don't think that he knew. And if he did know, he's not going to use it. 
I don't think so. So, right. That makes me happy. You got nothing else. See, I remembered it. No, oh, you didn't. What am I forgetting? Well, okay. One pretty big thing and one little side. Spinelli drinking vodka and orange soda like that he did after cute. Georgie passed away. That was cute. Georgie was murdered after Georgie was murdered. Yes. That's what he was drinking. But orange soda is always his drink. And so I like the fact that he just livened it up a little yep. with the vodka. That was very cute. And Chase's physical therapy. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's standing. Yay. I'm still standing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now we're on to karaoke time with Shannon. Little Elton John coming your way. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I need more to that story. He was just whining this week. I can't be the husband that you need me that's to be. That's fair, though. Wah, wah, wah. But that's totally fair. Dude, she gave up the man that she loves to try to make you happy, and you're still going to sit here know that, and though. whine at her? But he knows that there's something that she's hiding, and he feels like he's failing her. Quit crying, okay? Okay, let's go break your legs and let me know how you feel. Cry about how you feel, sure. But crying is the pity party at that point in time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Amanda, he's paralyzed and trying to learn he's how to walk again. And trying to learn how to walk again. And he feels like he's not being a good husband. And I can't imagine how that feels. And he absolutely should get some therapy and work through his issues. And I hope that he learns all of the things he needs to learn again. And whatever. I am not discounting any of that. He still has a great attitude. This week, he even called himself out on it. And he's like, I can't keep thinking this way. But there's emotional stuff that goes with being hurt like that. I just feel like Willow already has a lot to deal with. And putting your issues on her is not fair. Sign up for it when you get married. Okay. What? He's just supposed to be like, never mind. Everything's perfectly fine. I can't feel my legs. It's great. No. Da -da -da -da. If he's talking about how he feels... Then that's fine. But he is worried. He, he's worried about how he's making her feel and that she's not dealing with it with him. But you can't tell me how to deal with things. If she's dealing with it, she's dealing with it. And if she needs to talk to him, she will. But now he just put it out there. So she has to reassure him. And it's an insincere reassurement. I think he was just trying to be like, I need to make sure that you're okay. I feel like you're asking her to pretend even more. He doesn't know that she's pretending because she married him. Well, I didn't like it. I'm sorry. Okie dokie. You love Chase. I don't. How do you not like Chase? I I like him. I like to look at him. And I like him with his police stuff and all of that. Him with Dante hanging out. All right, cool, fine. But he's just getting to be too much of a puppy dog for Willow. It's not attractive anymore loves her that would actually be good though if they had some uh, i mean even though he has been put in the situation in different ways than other law enforcement right however you know shooting victims and stuff like that like they probably go through the same kind of physical rehab that'd be good to have some of his fellow oh my gosh what if we got amy's brother mm. to come back and be like hey yeah you know you can do this yes a support group or something. Yes. That would be awesome. He does need that. Yeah. Yeah. And then that would probably help him keep his money. And then he can vent to them about how he feels like he's failing his wife and that she's not opening up to him. Thank you. See, now you got what I was saying. That's not what you said. But that's not how I meant it. He doesn't need to make her feel worse. But he's not trying to make her feel worse. He's but he trying is. To, but he's not trying but to. But he is. He's trying to say to her, you can come to me. Like, don't just... Hold it in. Like, let me know what you're feeling. No, because when someone leads you into a conversation by saying, I feel like I'm not being a good husband, you can only reply with, of course you're being a good husband. I see. No, I'd be honest. I'm like, well, I disagree. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okie dokie. I feel like when you're set up, it wasn't a conversation. Tell me how you feel. What are you thinking? Do you have any concerns? I didn't feel like he was That's setting her up just to reassure him. I think he genuinely wanted to know. Maybe he didn't mean to set her up, but I feel like he set her up. I didn't take it that way. So don't, I don't set know. her up. Don't set up your wife. It's not nice. She can't be honest with you then. I don't think he was trying to set her up, but he did. I don't think so. Use better words. I don't know. <laughs> All right. We're never going to agree on anything with Chase and Willow. I think we decided this months ago. Yes. So what's next? I think that might be it. See, I had the majority of it. You did pretty good. I feel like I led the conversation here by pulling out my bullet points. 
A two <laughs> Q <laughs> arrow. <laughs> all right, so I guess that's all for the recap. Do, do, do. Reality check. What's your reality? I had such a just not boring week, but kind of mundane. My daughter and I got our first pedicures together on Friday, though. That was fun. I traded her super cute for her third week of work. Super cute. So, yeah, but I mean, really, it was just a lot of work getting ready for film camp this week, getting ready for vacation in three weeks, three weeks, two weeks, not next Sunday, but the Sunday after. Oh, yeah, we'll be on our way, right? Mm -hmm. That'll be fun. <laughs> I have a lot to get ready. Okay. <laughs> now that I just took away a whole week from you. You did. Sorry. <laughs> Honestly, just, um, I was kind of boring this week. Yesterday I was at a friend's house. Um, I don't want to get too much into it, but every year we get together to distract from something that happened oh. and we sure did. Good. <laughs> as long as you accomplished your mission. Yep. Good. And I wound up crying. Like ugly season. cry when I got home. No, because I miss her. So like we don't see each other as much as we used to either. So it's like, yay, we get to definitely hang out together oh, this, on this one, one day for sure. Yeah. But we used to hang out a heck of a lot more. And now we don't just because of a move. Yeah. I mean, it's proximity more right. than anything. But yeah, getting ready for my son to go to college. We're under a month now. Yikes. Not ready for that. Mm -mm. Yeah, really not a whole lot. I finished a book in two days. Oh, I didn't watch TV until Friday. Like, I didn't realize it until I think like Thursday morning. And I was like, no, then I'm just not going to watch TV until it was, I think, Friday morning. I didn't have anything going on. And I was like, okay. And that's when I started watching um, Why Women Kill. Although I had already started it. So I just didn't finish the first season. And now I'm on to the second season. I see. But it's a good show. It's on Paramount Plus. <laughs> they do not sponsor us. But they can if they want to. I don't know, because we're talking about an ABC show, and they're owned by CBS, I think, because it started as CBS All Access. Oh, all right. And they show all the CBS shows. Okay, then I guess not. So, yeah. Talk we'll just go ahead and plug who we want. Exactly. <laughs> we'll talk about whatever we want to. Yep. But that's it. What about you? My week was pretty boring. Uh, Emily got her first job. Yay! Which I'm super excited, and I'm most excited because she did it on her own. That's awesome. We've talked about the issues that she has, and... Because of that, I feel like I kind of hold her back sometimes because I'm just afraid she's going to do something sure. wrong. And this was one of those situations where I sent her the information because I saw the job posting and let her handle it from there. And she went on and applied and they asked why she wanted the job. And she wrote this like really good paragraph about her experience working with different kids and why she likes dealing with kids and babysitting and whatever. And then she had her interview Friday over Zoom and uh, she called me afterwards and I'm like, hello. And she says, I have some bad news. And I'm like, oh no, what's wrong? And like my heart broke yeah. for that second because I mean, they don't always tell you if you have a job no. at the end of the interview. So I'm thinking, oh, did she say something that now she realized she shouldn't have said? Like, what is it? Right. And then she was like, just kidding. I got the job. And oh, the excitement in her voice so happy for her. was worth a million dollars. So so what is she going to be doing? <laughs> She's going to work at one of the local daycare centers and it's kids six weeks to 12 years. And right now she's just going to kind of be a floater between all the different rooms. Yeah. But um, once like everything's established and stuff, then she will and get that's to... A, that's a big girl job. I mean, I hate to say like big girl job, but like that's a, that's a job that could be a career. Yes. You know, it's not just... Right. A gap year. Right. Like that's, that's awesome. It makes awesome. me angry though. Not that we can do anything to change it, but it makes me angry though. That we've talked about before how teachers are not paid enough. The daycare workers are not paid enough either because you can go to Wendy's and make 15 bucks an hour. But yep. if you're going to work in a daycare, it's like eight or nine dollars, which is insane. You're trusting these people with your children, right? Pay them accordingly. Just a bit, especially little kids. They're teaching them, right? A lot of the basics and reinforcing the stuff that you're teaching at home. Why would you pay the person that hands you a burger? Not that that's not a very important job because I love my fast food, but why would you pay a person that hands you a burger more than you pay someone that watches your child? I don't get it. So I don't either. I'll get down off my soapbox, but it was just very frustrating because especially in my house, the girls talk about whatever. And so Megan's like, yeah, I'm a dairy queen making more than what Emily is making taking care of people's children. But the, the emotional and the societal impact that she is having is although i love my blizzards right no and i love the fact that that was you're absolutely decision. right like why is it that so many teachers have to get second jobs and exactly. things like that 
right. just and to pay the bills. I was proud of her, especially at 18, because you do spend you want money. money all the time. Yeah. So the fact that she consciously made the decision to go after a job that is going to get her better in her career at some point in time. Right. Instead of just going where the money was, I was very proud. So. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So. I can't wait to hear how it goes. Oh, she's going to do so great at it. She's so good with little kids. Um, I don't know. That's like really, oh, my hot water tank broke. Ugh. So now I have no hot water. And Megan went to take a shower. It was Thursday night and was like, it's freezing. And I was like, okay, yep. We'll have to call the landlord and get that fixed. Cause oh God, that's don't right. Don't want to yep. take cold showers forever. Are and they she, getting it fixed? Oh yeah. They'll get a new one. It's fine. When? Um, I did. That happened Thursday. That it's happened been- Thursday. I no, I didn't call them yet because we were not home all weekend. We were doing nothing exciting but other dumb stuff, and I, it's just inconvenient to try to wind up a schedule. So I'm going to call them tomorrow, and then I'm sure they'll do it quickly. But it was funny because then Friday I took a bath and I just heated water up and poured it in the bathtub, and Megan's like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "This is the way they used to take baths." Yeah, not when I was little, but this is the way. That's they used how we to take did it at my cabin because we didn't so, have hot water. Yeah, and so if we wanted a bath over the weekend when we were visiting. You boiled water and dumped it in the tub. Exactly. So that's what I did. And she thought I was crazy. Yep. I was like, I think I'm a genius. So whatever. Awesome. But yeah, that's it. My life's pretty boring, but I was happy for a boring week. So yeah, I feel like just thanks when we have the same board, like the same week. Yes. The boring week. Exactly. I was exciting last week and I feel like everything's pushing us into back to school and yep. whatever. And I don't want to rush into all that. I just want to enjoy these last couple of weeks that we have. I hear you. Yeah. Work has even started to slow down a little bit for me. And at first I was kind of frustrated. And then I was like, nope, I only have a month left before he goes to school. And like all the, I was like, nope, I'll take it. Exactly. That also means I'm not going to be going crazy on vacation. Right. So I'm not going to have a lot going on. Yes. So perfect. Yeah. So just how that works. But join us on Thursday as we chat with one of our, our fans and a fan of General Hospital. I'm excited. Yes. It'll be fun. We haven't done a fan spotlight in a while. I know. The last one was Max. Yeah. I like the fan ones. Me too. They're the most fun. It's fun. And we have two interviews coming up this week and other ones that we are working on. So yes, we will get those scheduled soon and hopefully released soon too. So have a good week and we'll meet with a pair. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to peer54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Peer 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect. So if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com.